You know what I was thinking before we started today's show? I wonder how terrible the mistletoe business has been this year. <laughs> Welcome to the weekend. Nick Karski, Zensky with you here. Inching closer and closer and closer to the holidays. So, so what put that thought in your head, though? Um, because I was thinking about COVID and I was thinking about things that you can't do during COVID. And I'm assuming that touchy feely kissing is probably frowned upon. And that just must mean the mistletoe business is not booming right now. (laughs) Well, so, so here's my question though. Who, who are you kissing under the mistletoe that's not in your immediate household? Because... From my own past experience, it would just be like if Jenna, like Jenna and I don't even have a mistletoe here, but obviously like that's, <laughs> you know, like obviously if, if, because if other people are in your place under a mistletoe, then they probably shouldn't be in your house in the first place because that's going against everything that everybody's saying right now of what not to do. Oh, come on. You know, there's that one person, that one guy or girl out there who does some weird stuff and just awkwardly oh, invites people over at, at, at their own <laughs> leisure and say, oh, look at what this is. Yeah. And it's it's, a, that's in every every bad Christmas movie is like they end it with, you know, John and Susie under the mistletoe and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> so every Hallmark Christmas movie is what you're trying to say. That's or every Netflix Christmas movie for that for that I've matter. Never I don't know what it seen is. A Netflix Christmas movie, and I very rarely <laughs> have watched a, a lifetime Christmas movie or Hallmark Christmas movie, I should say. But um, they're pretty bad, aren't they? I don't think you're missing much because, like, we were trying to find something to watch the other day, and so we were scrolling through Netflix, and like every thumbnail is just the same. It's like the guy and the girl with like the big bold lettering and the snow falling in the background. And so he's like my Christmas Prince charming or like, it's, it's, it's like a lame title like that. And if God forbid my father-in-law, he is, here's this. Cause he's, he would hate me for saying this cause he loves Hallmark movies and like, really, Hey, you, like own it if that's your thing. But like, I don't know. I just, I don't get what the fad is with it. Um, I don't know if it's a fad per se. I think people just have a fascination with the fairy tale fantasy that comes with it. Could be. Maybe Could people be. I mean, are that I miserable ever... with their own lives and their relationships. They just <laughs> wish somebody would just, you know, whisk them off their feet during the holidays. Somebody from a long lost past relationship. I don't know, man. It could be, but, uh, <laughs> I, there's no shortage of them this year. I feel like the, the I always just thought it was just a Hallmark thing, but now I think Netflix and all the all the services are getting into that streaming Christmas movies game. Oh, no question about it. Uh, we got a pretty good fun loaded show for you today. Uh, the snow hit the area, at least my area, in the southern tier very, very hard. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Also, with Christmas getting closer and closer and closer... We will power rank the worst Christmas toys that you could possibly ever get. Like, the worst of the worst. Um, But that all comes up. What were you going to say? Very extensive research we did to figure this out. I know. It came from my brain. And I tell you what, I am the toy king, okay? (laughs) I used to have all the latest and greatest when I was a kid. I wouldn't doubt that for a second. (laughs) But first, as we always do... Here's what you missed. All right, jumping into it, some good news on top of some good news we received last week in the world of uh, COVID vaccines. Uh, At the time of recording this on uh, Thursday, the FDA committee had just uh, sent it, voted on their recommendation to approve a second coronavirus uh, vaccine from pharmaceutical company Moderna. Um, This. yeah, super big. So it is not like officially approved for use yet, but this is like the first major milestone in terms of doing that. It still needs to be af- uh, approved officially by the director and the, like the chief scientist of the FDA and the CDC needs to sign off on it um, as well. So uh, the two approved vaccines right now are pretty comparable, um, but I mean, in terms of uh, you know their their efficacy, both are about 95% effective, which is massively 
positive. Right. Um, and then uh, there's just some like nuances between, you know, how many days apart and things like that. But overall, really good way to start going into 2021, if you ask me. Yeah, no question about it. I, I think it's something, you know, in terms of the positive news that we absolutely need because this thing continues to run rampant. Um, for, you know, there are some people out there who are, I want to say torn by the vaccines, but they're, they're kind of saying, oh, I won't get it. Well, I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But like, you're right. putting things at risk. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that a lot of these frontline workers are first in line getting this thing. But can we just talk about for a hot second? I'm very confused why Sir Ian McKellen, um, was one of the first people in basically the world to receive the the vaccination. I saw that. So what? So like, it, is is knighthood? Is that up there with like frontline workers in the UK? I don't know. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be rude about it. Like, congratulations to him for feeling euphoric, as he put it. <laughs> right. But um, I just thought maybe there would be some other people who would maybe get a vaccination before he would. Maybe like the, the queen? Was the queen even vaccinated? <laughs> I don't know. I feel right? like a lot like of people she... aren't going to publicly say if they've been vaccinated or not. Well, I mean, I, I would hope that they do because that means if you're vaccinated, it means you believe that it's that it's worth getting. And like we need more of that out there right now. People are doubting it. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, I just know that. Um, you know, in, in not to throw him under the bus, but I just think it's a little bizarre that he is one of the first people to get the vaccination. I know that there are leagues, um, such as the NFL who are trying to, uh, obviously make things work during these times. And they basically have come right out and said, Hey, we're not going to jump the line to try and get everybody vaccinated. We're going to let other people go first who need it significantly more than us and our players yeah. and everything like that whereas major league baseball is taken into consideration hey we might start the season actually a little bit later in order for us to make sure everybody in involved with major league baseball franchises are vaccinated like the, there is a, a consideration to start the season in may so um there's there's obviously so many different storylines and so many different things that are happening now that this vaccination well these vaccinations are actually out and available to you know some of the public right yeah and like i i, I commend those leagues for for doing that because yeah obviously like you should be like i mean i'm sorry but athletes they don't they don't need to get a vaccine ahead of somebody who's like working in a hospital so um i'm glad that at least they've been public with that yeah Next, talking about injecting things into your body, uh, Russia <laughs> is barred from future sporting events because of doping. Global sporting authorities ruled on Thursday that Russia will be banned from all major international competition, including the Olympic Games, for two years as part of a doping case. The decision was issued by the Court of Arbitration for Sport in Switzerland. Under the ruling, Russia is barred from the Summer Olympics and Paralympics in Tokyo next summer, the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, and the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. The ruling also prohibits the display of the Russian flag and the playing of its national anthem at all international events until 2023. Hmm. Now they surprised? finally get a slap on it. No, I'm not surprised. Not, but not at all. Not, not by any stretch of the imagination. Look, they've been trying to bend the rules in just about any sort of sport that you can possibly compete at um, over the last, you know, I would say a couple of decades. Quite frankly, yeah. I mean, they've they've tried to um, find that extra edge that they can maybe get past the IOC or other. Uh, high sporting um, leagues and conferences and whatnot. No, so I, I'm not surprised by by any means when it comes to that news. Yeah, so I'm surprised because I actually had to dig a little bit when I was looking for stories for the show to to see that. I'm surprised it wasn't a uh, a bigger story to be honest, but. I guess in the context of what else is going on right now, it's really not. Um, I, I'm trying to remember the there was a cycling documentary that was on Netflix at one point. 
Icarus, I believe is what it was called, as I'm trying to look it up right now. But it was basically about how a cyclist wanted to get better and wanted to, you know, use some some Russian doping methods, you know, or doping methods through Russia to basically journalistically show like, hey, this stuff is doable. This is possible. It's a it's a tremendous documentary from what I remember. It used to be on Netflix. Don't know if it's there anymore. But if you can watch it, highly recommend it because it goes to show you just how much you can possibly get away with in in the world of sports when it comes to doping. So add that to your watch list after uh, you know your cheesy Hallmark Christmas movie. <laughs> Uh, next up, for the right amount of money, you can blow up Donald Trump's former casino. Oh, dear God. Atlantic City is offering critics of President Donald Trump the chance to celebrate his departure with a literal bang. Mayor Marty Small uh, Sr. announced Thursday that the Jersey Shore town is auctioning the chance to push the button that will set the implosion of the now-closed Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino. The city plans to donate the money raised to the Boys and Girls Club of Atlantic City. Quote, personally, I'm a pretty ambitious guy. I want to raise at least a million dollars, Small said in a news conference Thursday. The funds will go toward expanding and sustaining the club's operations for its three sites across the city. Boys and Girls Club of Atlantic City CEO Stephanie Koch told CNN. I could see that going for that kind of money. I could see that going for even more. There there are a lot of people out there who are not fans of that guy. And Yeah. I, and who have I could money see too. a lot of people who have that kind of money saying, let me throw this money down and blow up the joint. <laughs> because if it was just like, I mean, I'm glad that it's at the end of the day that it's going towards a good cause. Like Boys and Girls Club is a great organization regardless of the city that it's in, right? Yeah. So I think that you're going to get somebody to come in who wants to be philanthropic it wants to be charitable around the holidays and also wants to stick stick it to Donald Trump a little bit. So like oof. Win win win. Oof. Man. So I how's how's that to to literally close the year out with a bang? Or I, I don't know when the implosion is happening, oh but like God, did you really just use that analogy? I, I, I did I mean I what I d- pulled it from the lead of the story. It's not like he came that came up with that off the top of my head. You, wait, creative. so you didn't come up with that? Did you hear the lead? I, I read the lead of the story. Did you, were you not listening? Uh, th- Atlantic City is offering criti- critics of President Donald Trump the chance to celebrate his departure with a literal bang. Well, you said exactly to celebrate his <laughs> departure, but you're saying now to celebrate the end of the year with a bang. Well, that too, but we don't know when this implosion is happening, so it could that could be a moot point. We don't know if 2020 is going to ever end. Maybe it'll just go right into 2021 better. for some reason. It, it, we better go into 2021. Yeah. <laughs> just, just completely <laughs> stop. Yeah, I know. You're telling me. So so, so you, you mentioned at the top of the show, uh, we, we got some, some snow, a little yeah. bit of snow. Yeah, to put it lightly. Um, we got here in the Horseheads area, maybe about two feet, maybe two and a half feet in some spots. I mean, it was, it was very messy last night. Um, on when I was, wait, were you out last night? Oh yeah. I was out last night for a little bit. Oh my God. And, uh, it was really, really messy coming home. But here's the thing, like you, I, I understand being cautious when there's a really bad storm happening. But sometimes if you drive almost too slow, it, it, it just, I feel like it does more damage than it does good. You know, mm. if you're, if you're creeping along at like less than 10 miles per hour, that's not going to help anybody. You're just hurting yourself. And I feel like, you know, just, just try to get a nice, steady, comfortable speed without obviously going the speed <laughs> limit. I'm not telling, trying to tell people how to drive here, but I kind of am. But just like a nice, constant, steady speed that's going to keep everybody moving, <laughs> that's going to keep everybody okay. Because when I'm going to be one of those people who says, oh, the rules are thrown out the window when it comes to driving in the snow. Yes, that is absolutely the case. But I'm, add me onto the list of people who are going to publicly complain about that. 
Well, and also take this with a grain of salt that's coming from the guy who grew up in central New York this, his entire life, and like two feet of snow is nothing for you. Uh, yeah, yes and no, because it just depends on what kind of snow it is, Enski. That's true. We you should have gotten like the, the fluffy stuff, or are we talking about the slushy which, stuff? Like, what are we talking about here? Well, you like last like you should have gotten the the powdery stuff last night, right? That's exactly what we got. It was very like granular and just like if right. you try to make a make a snowball or something like that, which is what I tried to do to try and throw up in the air for the dogs to like have some fun with, even though they're completely not coordinated enough for that stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not, um, you know, it, you just couldn't pack pack it. It was it was not packing right. snow by any stretch. Yeah. Well, uh, so I am admittedly not a fan of snow, and oh, I hate it. We only got, a, yeah, we only got about ten inches here, so nowhere near what you got or what Binghamton got at a whopping forty inches of snow. <sighs> Man, bananas. Um, so, but it got me thinking though, because even if we get, if even if it's like four to six inches of snow, I'm annoyed by it because it's just a nuisance. Uh-huh. I don't, I don't like it. Stay, 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 rain, stay rain. But it got me thinking, what's more annoying than getting a foot or two of snow? And I just started to mull it over and figure we could talk about it. Because I, I think I have some ideas of things that could possibly be more annoying than that. Okay, lay it on me. What do you got? So, <laughs> starting off the list, if I could find it. <laughs> Your own list. Missing a can. green light. Missing a green light by one car. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. But so, you're, like, you're sitting at a you're sitting at a red light. It turns and like you're going left at an intersection. So it, the green arrow turns green, and then there's like five cars in front of you, and it's one of those short lights. And so the five cars go, and then you just don't have enough time to make it to be a six car to go through. But what if it's yellow? Are you, are you? I'm not a risk. No, I'm not like that. I was going to say, I'm, you're a cautious person. You're going to see the yellow yeah. and you're just going to slow uh-huh. things down and just, you Oh, know. Jenna hates it. She hates oh, it. I would too. I'm glad I'm not married to you. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't like that whatsoever. Man. Well, fair enough. You just, you just, look, Jenna's in the right here. You just got to floor okay, it. Okay. You just got to go for it. You just got to make the move. I, I'm not surprised this is coming from the guy who also wants to go like 70 in a snowstorm, it sounds like. Just try to go a consistent mile, like okay, speed Okay, all right. Like, if you want to go 22 or something like that, I'm okay with that. Just try to be a little consistent because all we're right, going to get ready to go up a hill, and going up a hill at 10 miles per hour is not good. <laughs> That's right. All right, what do you got? Um, People who tell you to give baseballs to kids. Oh, is it is it like a story that that informs this? No. This has to be coming from somewhere. No, no? It, it's never happened to me. But I I go to baseball games a lot when there's no pandemic. Going no on. kidding. Yeah. And anytime an adult gets a baseball, all you hear is, "Give it to the kid! Give it to the kid!" Look, for some adults, there was a time when they were a kid too. And for right. some adults, they may not have ever had the thrill of catching a foul ball or having a player toss them a baseball or something like that. To me, it's one of those things where it almost brings an adult back into their youth with the excitement and the the memories that kind of like come yeah. with it. So a part of me is okay if you're an adult and you decide to keep the baseball for yourself and not necessarily give it to that kid. Because I tell you what, when I was a kid and I was six, seven, eight years old, nine years old, I would work hard to try and get those baseballs at those baseball games, okay? I would ask the players. I'd run from one side of the field to the other. I'd go to batting Knock practices. other kids down. Oh, no, no, I wasn't that mean. But I, I worked hard to try and gain that respect to get a baseball i don't need a baseball handed to me even though a few of them were by adults but adults shouldn't have to give the baseball to the kid that's more annoying than snow i could i could see that okay um all right here's another one for me waiting longer for your food at a restaurant than the table who sat down after you 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, that's yeah. pretty annoying. Oh, like, yeah. and, and so I will say there are caveats to this. So like, if you're of equal party size, it's not like they're four and you're a party of 10, right? Like that's understandable. But if right. like you're a family of four, they're a family of four, everybody ordered like an entree and like you got an app for the table. And then like, you're still waiting like 10 to 15 minutes after your food comes out, after their food comes out. And the thing is, those people, they always have the most boring last names. Smith, Smith, party of four. Johnsons. <laughs> the, the Goldman. The Br- Goldman. What kind of know. what kind of generic last name is that? <laughs> you said boring last names. That's a generic say, last name. I was gonna say like the Smiths, the Johnsons, the Browns, the yeah. Uh, what else? What else is like the Whites? Um, just really generic, boring names. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I can see that. Certainly no Bierzenskis. Or Karskis. Or Karskis, let me tell you. Anybody who has a a middle European Polish heritage. We we get the good seats (laughs) and we get them when we want them. Okay? Exactly. All Um, right, what's another one for you? It's how I'm feeling right now. It's that slight feeling of being sick. Oh. It is where your throat is just ever so slightly sore. You try to drink enough liquids to make it stop. It the, the pain still hurts. Your nose is starting to run a little bit. You're starting to feel a little tired and everything like that. You just got the usual common cold. You know, normally I'd be going ballistic today and just, you know, I'm just just zooming here, there, and everywhere. I've had so many cups of coffee today. I need more coffee, but it, it just hasn't it hasn't kicked in and i like i said it's that slight feeling of of getting ready to be sick uh, yeah that, i i'm with you there that is that is not fun at all and uh well get some coffee take some uh dayquil nightquil or whatever you need to do <laughs> okay is that is that that's kind of a, you don't even have a, a witty response no to that. i <laughs> I tried to come up with something and then my brain just froze and I basically had a stroke right there. More coffee for you. Well, let's hope it's not a stroke. Let's just hope it's the common cold. Also true. Uh, Know-it-alls. The people who just have that air about them that need... No, but I, I see. See, I don't. I don't consider you like that. So here's the thing: it's the know-it-all through. Like they have the air of like the "I'm better than you" component, yeah. right? And it's like the way that they position their rationale behind something, or their argument, or like their point of view on something. It's all done in a tone and with a vibe that is like you're better than me, and it's condescending. And you think you're better than me and you know more and I'm not here for it. No, I, I totally agree with that. And it's that that mindset of, you know, here, I you know, no, you, you hit the nail on the head. I got nothing else to contribute to that because you basically said it so perfectly that I, I do agree with How you about on that? that. I know you're a know-it-all. All right. <laughs> do, you, do you have another one? I've got one more. Okay, I do too. So you go. No, you go. All right. When you're sitting on a plane, a train, some form of transportation, and there's somebody there who is playing the music so freaking loud that you could hear every lyric through their headphones. (laughs) Well. (laughs) Or... To, to, to take it one better, it's people who don't even use headphones and play it off their phone speaker in public All right. on a train. That's that's a little much. That's a little yeah. much. And it's always the same kind of music. It's always the same kind of music. It's yep. like really, really bad, like trap rap talking it's, about it's their bad fi- stuff that we can't say. I mean, we could say, but I don't want to say. It, it, yeah, it's always the hip hop artist that like only they know about because they they dug deep into Spotify and found them and like you know 
Nobody needs that. Just just plug your headphones in and, and put it at a reasonable volume. That's all I can say. Here's the problem. It's coming from a DJ too. But this here's here's my issue is that people probably can hear my music, but that's just because I feel like I'm partially deaf. What? What? <laughs> Do, wait, you're, are you really that guy? What? Are you really huh? that guy? Okay. No, I no, I I'm not. I don't purposely try to be that guy. I just like my music at a nice, have not heavy sound, but like a nice, full sort of sound. And and like I said, sometimes I think that I'm hard of hearing, so I have it up a little bit higher than I need to. <laughs> Does this? So is because I I I I'm the same way. I think I I've definitely have hearing loss in my left ear. Like no doubt about it. Like I always, like I do this sometimes. Like I, if I'm, if I'm wearing my headphones like I am right now and I, and I just happen to take the left one out to listen to what Jen is saying or something, I'll always, it'll always sound like most of the sound is coming from the right side. And then I could test it. I'll put the left side back in, check the right side. And I barely hear anything coming out the left. You, you test it, huh? I was just curious <laughs> no, one day no, no, and no, like I it, 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 I get it, I get it, I get where you're coming from, but. I think it comes from like playing in bars and nightclubs, and like I, I really should practice what other DJs preach and, and wear a head and earplugs more actively when I go to gigs when they're happening. Um, but also too, like I remember back to our days in the WICB studio, we had these two massive studio monitors Huge, yeah. that we would hear that, yeah. And uh, so when you're there, especially when we did our shows at like sometimes as early as six in the morning, like you would crank it. To, oh, yeah. to try to wake up a little bit. So I, I'm pretty sure that those shifts contributed a little bit to my hearing loss. <laughs> right? You should ask IC for your money back. No, I... Well, yeah, I'd entertain it for a second, but... <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. Um, so, uh, all right. Did you have another or is that it? Uh, I do have another, but I don't really want to harp on it too much. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Birthdays. What about them? I'm just not a big fan of them. More, they're Why? They're, they're annoying to me. Why are they annoying? Just though? I don't know. Another year older, another year, all that stuff. I just the nonsense that comes with it. The the the, the public knowing about it. Just just like, no, not a fan. Speaking of which, happy belated birthday, Nicholas. Another year older, another year wiser. You you read me like a book on this one, didn't you? Thank you. Much appreciated. You're welcome. No, I, You're welcome. I genuinely, I, I appreciate it. I do. But I'm not a big fan of birthdays. At least my birthday, I should say. Not, it's not like I, I hate everybody else's birthday. Like, oh, God, wish you weren't born. No, I just am not a big fan of my birthday. Never have been. I know I know you're not, and I, and, and I knew that, but I'm sorry. You're going to get an acknowledgement anyway from uh, myself and, and your friends and, and our listeners well, and watchers and viewers. I, and... I do appreciate it. Where's my present? So your present is a recurring bit that we used to do. Go, talking about ICB, right? Back when we'd had the show... We did a little something called Famous Birthdays, which is a lot of people do this. But um, I went and looked through December 16th, which is your actual birthday. Not much happening. Not much going on. What? I looked up, I looked on December 17th. Also not much going on. But the day that this show is coming out, December 18th, we got some birthdays. So wait, do, so before I do that, do you want to hear the 16th and the 17th? I know on the 16th. You've got Beethoven, which explains my love for music. And you've got the one and only Dan Levitard, who is one of my oh. absolute favorite people in the history of ever. Okay. So there you, you also go. have That's all that matters. You also you also have uh Catherine of Aragon. Who? She is uh the first bride of King Henry VIII. She held the title of Queen of England from 1509 to 1533. Oh, great. Oh, great. And she, uh, she and Henry became parents to three sons and two daughters who died as infants and to a sole surviving daughter, Mary I, Bloody Mary, who later ruled England. 
So you share that birthday. So I so I looked at that, and obviously not much going on on December uh, 16th. I checked December 17th. Also not much going on besides Pope Francis. Oh, holy night. And, and <laughs> uh, so then I came to the actual air date of this show, December 18th. And now we have a list, okay? So to start it off, we got Billie Eilish. Okay. Happy bir- happy 18th birthday to Billie Eilish. I didn't think she was that young. She's 18. Oh my. God. 18. God, and she's making millions. She couldn't even vote this this past election. That's crazy. Uh, then you got Sia, very talented musician and pop star. Yeah. Uh, 44 years old. Brad Pitt. Really. 56. Yeah, I could see that. I figured he was in his mid 50s. Yep. Uh, Ashley Benson, TV actress, is 30. You got Christina Aguilera, another pop star, obviously, 39 years old. Oh, I can't say that. Can I say that? Can I, could I, did I, did I just break some, some rule? No, I just don't, don't do any more of it, but I think you're fine. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Joseph Stalin (laughs) (laughs) was born on uh, December 18th, as was Stone Cold Steve Austin. Who's 55 years old? Give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Steven Spielberg is 73. Really? DMX, the rapper, is 49. <laughs> DMX is 49 years old. And I think that is pretty. Oh, no, we got some more. Uh, Keith Richards was like 100 and 76. But Keith, Keith Richards looks like he's 176, but he's actually 62. I, no, he's actually 76. Oh, okay. But yes, he does look like he's 176. And I think that is about it. So a decent amount of birthdays on December 18th. And if it is your birthday on December 18th, happy birthday from To The week. Yes, happy birthday to you. Um, what do you think Keith Richards snorts on his birthday? Uh, candle wax? Maybe he just or, goes for or, the frosting. Right. Yeah, or just like yeah, anything sugary and powdery or maybe just take some of the snow from outside and can't believe that's the route I decided to take that joke. I I mean what what other Keith Richards joke are you going to do? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Right? <laughs> the dude is um, I mean, God bless him for being able to be around for as long as he has been cuz holy bleep. Dude, I I will say though, I am it, it is one of the – something that's very inspiring is to see some of these older musicians get up on stage and still, like, do their thing when they're in their 60s, their 70s, the 80s. Like, I'm talking your Tony Bennett's. I'm talking your Paul McCartney's, yeah. right? I'm, I'm talking your Elton John's, your Stevie Wonder's, like, all the people from this – from that 50s, 60s, 70s generation that have been doing this for 40 or 50 years, like – the fact that they could still get up on stage and rock it is, is it's pretty cool to see. It's impressive. It goes to show you that they've got the passion for it, or that they very well might like the almighty dollar <laughs> that comes with it. I don't know, one or the other. But still, you know, I'm I I'm. We talked about this here a couple weeks ago. You know, I'm somebody who's going to throw down that top dollar to go see a lot of these people because, in my eyes, they're living legends. So yeah, I mean, yeah. for them to be able to do that, to have that longevity, and to have music that resonates for as long as it has i mean it's it's something special yeah and uh i think um well what is and i was thinking about that too after we were uh you know after listening back to last or a couple weeks ago show um what is going to be the first big event that you want to go to or like throw money down for after this whole thing is said and over that you could do? Is it a baseball game? I don't know. Is it a vacation? Is it a Paul McCartney concert? Like, what's that thing? Because I've been thinking about that, and, like, I I mean, I'm going to just want to do it all, I feel like. I, I feel like I've been wanting to do it all, but at the same time, I feel like I've grown so accustomed to not doing anything that a part of me is almost reluctant to do anything. Is that That's crazy? Also a good point. Is that crazy? It's not... It's not crazy. I think it's just a little sad. I mean, that the fact that it like, because I'm with you there. Like, I was thinking about it too. Like, it it's you, we're just accustomed to staying home. You know, so like, wh- what's gonna what's gonna encourage us to go out and shell 
hundreds and thousands of dollars to have these vacations or have these experiences. I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth because I know the next time that like I'm presented like with the opportunity to go on a vacation, I'm there. Yeah. Like we're, we're doing it. Like Jenna and I love to travel. So, um, I, but yeah, I, I do, I do think it's going to, I think it's more so the fact that like you're going to be in a crowd of people where like that's going to be the far, the, 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 the part that doesn't feel right. Well, it's going to be that. And I feel like we're still going to have to wear masks to a lot of these events that we go to. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, I wish I could answer that question for you, but I feel like, Things are going to be so different now that yeah. it's. I, I'm trying to. Th- I don't know. I'm trying to get myself to to say like going to a baseball game or going to uh, a Bills game or something like that. But I I just don't know, man. I really don't. Yeah, I mean, I I, I feel I think I'm in the camp of like going to want to do it all because a lot of it is just it, it's been missed out on for the last year. You know, and I think people are going to want to make up for that. And like I have, you know, buddies and friends who are in in the hospitality industry. They either work at a restaurant or they're a DJ. And, you know, obviously, like, you know, that industry has been hit super hard by everything that's going on. Right. And, you know, I think there's just like this desire to get people back out in, in a fun environment. And I think the the hope and the wish is that everybody's been cooped up for so long that as soon as they're able to have those events and parties that are really a symbol of a sense of normalcy or some sort of normalcy people are going to take advantage of it so i think you're going to be seeing a lot of ticketmaster ads and a lot of oh yeah nightclub promotions and a lot of just all, all this stuff that kind of stems from that entertainment industry like it's going to be it's going to be massive, and and I think it's good because I think that industry really needs a a boost after the lack of one that they've gotten this whole time. But I think you're also going to have people like me who are still a little reluctant about a lot of this stuff, and I and I so, and I feel like I shouldn't be because I feel like I've been around this thing in 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 may or may not have had it or whatever. But like, I right. don't know for some reason I'm just feeling like eh. You know, if I, if I don't get to go to this event or this game or this performance or whatever, then then I'm okay, and that's that's yeah. not who I usually am. Well, and well, so here's the thing, though. Like, if if you if you knew that a requirement to get into one of these events was you needed to be vaccinated, would you go? Would you be more apt to go? Yeah, I think so. I think I'd feel a little bit. Uh, safer, no question. Um, a part of me feels like the whole wearing a mask thing kind of makes makes it, it would make things feel forced. You know, if I had to wear a mask yeah. at a sporting event or I had to wear a mask at a concert, then then to me it just feels like I'm trying to force myself to go and enjoy myself um, rather than just letting it kind of come to me. If that makes sense. It does, but I, I think you're going to have people, and I might, I haven't fully figured this out yet. I might be in this camp of like, you know, th- th- there's going to be a decent amount of people who, after it's quote unquote okay to not wear a mask anymore, they're still going to do it. It's going to be the, it, it's going to be the, the new thing, just as it, as it has been in Asia for years before this we always there are people out there who always question like seeing photos from asian countries of people wearing masks and like oh why are they doing that for this exact reason so like i I don't i don't care one way or another if people are going to look at me differently because i'm going to be the exception uh, to the rule of wearing a mask like if that's what's going to keep me safe then fine but obviously if we're going to a place where there's now vaccines and and stuff uh, incorporated to where like that's a measure that's going to keep you safe like then yeah obviously you don't need to wear the mask but I wouldn't be surprised and I was talking to Jen about this the other day that in order for a lot of these close knit spaces stadiums concert halls cruise ships uh, you know what have you like you're, there's going to need to be a proof of vaccination before you could get on board yeah. or inside or whatever and I think that that's just going to be the new standard from now on. I think on. it's going to be the norm. It's crazy yeah. to think about. It is, but I think we're on a good track and ready to go into uh, 
2021 at least with some good news on that front um it's been about 10 minutes did you, you still didn't get me a, a birthday present Next week. I will have a birthday present to you next week. Before we wrap things because, up. Because. Okay, go ahead. Before we wrap things up, I want to power rank presents. But the worst okay. Christmas presents. The worst Christmas toys out there. So this Number is your five. list. Number five. Yes, it is my list. Number five. A slinky. I'm sorry. I don't care if it's an American classic. What do you do with a slinky? You just literally play with it back and forth and back and forth from one hand to the other. You just let it fall down the stairs. What if what if you live in an apartment complex and you don't have stairs for some reason? You live on the bottom floor. Well, guess your SOL. Slinky's not going to be any good for you, is it? <laughs> But then you get inventive and you, you can make your own little staircase with like boxes Why would I do that? And... Why would I want to do that? What else What else know. can you do with a slinky? What if it was the, the slinky dog from Toy Story? Would you have the same hatred for it that you do? Yes. Ah, oh, that's sad. Number four. This is also an American classic. And I don't know why it is. An Etch-A-Sketch. Nobody, oh, nobody in their right mind can actually draw something worth drawing on an Etch-A-Sketch. The average person can't, but there are people out there who actually make legitimate artwork on those yeah, things. Yeah, you know what we call those people? Nerds. <laughs> Number three. Wasting their time trying to make a portrait of themselves that still doesn't even look that good. I mean, if you God. know someone, if you know someone who has made artwork on an etch a sketch, let us know. We want to have them on the show. I'll call them a nerd. Okay, All right. I will show them some respect because I think that's pretty cool. Number three, as we power <laughs> rank the worst Christmas toys, if you remember this, hit clips. Do you remember those? It was no. basically a mini player, a mini music player that came with like a headphone or headphones and a little cartridge that would play 60 seconds of a song. So all it would all it would be would be you take like your little cartridge that has in syncs it's going to be me on it, right? You take the cartridge, you put it in this player, it plays 60 seconds of the song and that's it. Why? <laughs> it's a terrible right? toy, right? Like why? That's that's awful. I, I I do agree with you on that, and I would love to make an office reference right now, but I can't because you wouldn't understand it. Nope, would have no idea. <sighs> Hit clips God. number three. Number two. You know, I used to collect these, but I didn't understand the purpose of collecting them, and I think I just did it because it was a fad. And, I mean, there was a whole purpose behind this, and that was playing the game. But I didn't know how to play the game, and I never understood it. And nobody ever invited me to play the game when I was a kid. So it must be I was a nerd in my, in my own right. Um, but Pogs. Do you remember Pogs? No. You don't remember Pogs? I don't. I don't remember. Pick, pick clips, Pogs. What are you, what are you talking about? Terrible Christmas toy. Okay, look up Pogs really quick. If you are to look up Pogs, you might have an idea of what I'm talking about. I am so floored by the number of people who don't know what Pogs are here in 2020. Everybody just seems to be living under a rock. You don't remember these at all from being a child in the 90s? Milk, milk caps? Yes, that's exactly what they were. They weren't like actual milk caps, but they were cardboard caps that had different pictures or designs on them. You could get baseball players on them. You could get Power Rangers on them. You could get cartoon characters on them. How have you never heard of Pogs? I'm like trying to... Oh, wait. For, so... For some reason, like some... like these designs look familiar, but I can't remember when I would have like encountered them or like played with them as a toy first or, like, or second I, grade that's when you would have in first and second grade i feel like i was playing like a game boy or something or playing with your etch sketch must be number one <laughs> power ranking 
the number one worst Christmas toy you could possibly get? The game Yahtzee. That's it. The game Yahtzee. What? Why? It's it, it's basically a game that prepares you to be um, a degenerate <laughs> with tossing dice. Just like okay, I'll elaborate though. Just like I'm not seeing you're it. just tossing the dice. All right, there you go. Like oh, look at this. You get a a couple of twos, and you you get this, or like I don't know. It's just it, but but like. It just so it, I, teaches, I, it teaches kids at the age of seven that hey, you should roll some dice in your life and gamble away. But so how is that different from like any any board game though? Because like any of those kid board games, there's like a level of gambling. Like yeah, Monopoly. but there's, there's a little they, bit of purpose. They're teaching people real estate investment in in, in Monopoly yeah, at age exactly. five. Real, like, real estate investment, exactly. What's the point of Yahtzee? Uh, yeah, you get some numbers. Oh, who cares? Well, I'm trying. It's funny you say that because I'm trying to think of it. I can't even tell you how to play Yahtzee. Yeah, that's. I mean, I played it before, but I can't like. I played Yahtzee so many times here, and by so many times, I mean only about ten times that I still don't understand the rules and the purpose of it. See? Okay. There you go. So, so that is your your degenerate kids don't play it. (laughs) Your number one power ranking of the worst Christmas toys is Yahtzee. Yahtzee. So these are all very well settled then on the islands of, of misfit to- misfit toys. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is that a- is that accurate to say? Okay, I would say good. so. Just went to absolutely got it. Well, listen. I hope you don't get any uh, of these terrible toys for Christmas because by the time we're chatting next week, it will be Christmas, and we will have a fun show in store for you next yeah, week. We will. With some holiday uh, joyous activities. So make sure you tune in for that. There is going to be an episode on December 25th on Christmas. So listen to it while you're uh, enjoying your, your holiday. But until then, rate the podcast. Follow us on social media. Subscribe to the podcast. And until next week, you stay classy, my friend. You stay classy, my friend. Peace. Peace.